Uh, welcome to the session on sentence correction. Today we are going to deal with various errors that are generally committed in the English language. And there are a lot of MCQs based on that which are generally asked in the competitive examinations also in various company placements. So after this lecture you will be able to understand the different grammatical concepts in the English language. Different questions that will be related to various points of grammar in the English language. You will be able to solve MCQs that will be based on sentence correction. Sentence correction is a vital part of your competitive exams, you know, verbal ability section. Uh, it comprises important questions based on sentence correction. So the general, what kind of questions will be there in this? So you will be given a sentence, maybe a part of which will be highlighted in bold. It could be underlined also and there will be three or four options. And from that you have to choose the correct option which will replace the underlined part or the bold part as that one is incorrect part right and there might also be a possibility that you do not require any change you feel that the sentence is correct therefore in that case you will choose the no error option so you will have all those options over there right and so we will discuss about some of the different types of errors in sentence correction now the first type of error is pronoun reference right now what is pronoun reference? You know, in a sentence, there is a noun and then after that we use a pronoun to refer to that pronoun, right. Now that reference should be correct. That means you should be using the correct pronoun for the noun. For example, if it is a boy, you will use he for that. If it is a girl, you will be using she or her for that, right. Like in these days, you know, we have, we lot, we talk about transgender community also and rights of transgender community, article 377 we know has been revoked and therefore people are more free as compared to the past. So uh, I think there would be a dilemma in your mind that okay how will we refer to a transgender, will we refer to him as he or she. Now there is a solution to that that has been given and that is they, you can refer to them as they right and probably I feel that there will be a time that will come when you will be referring to each and every person as they, it is not valid or applicable now but that might be in the future, right. So you can refer to those people as they, right. So that is the pronoun reference, your pronoun that must agree with the reference in number. Singular pronoun should have a singular reference and plural pronoun should have a plural reference, right. So for example, when you are talking about a number of people, so for a number of people you can't say that people are responsible for his or her mistakes, no. People are responsible for their mistakes, there is a word that we use for plural subject, plural noun. These all things you have to take care in mind when we are dealing with these kind of questions. Let us take up an example. The minister met the manager and he recognized him. Now here there is a dilemma. He is referring to whom? Is he referring to the minister or the manager? It is not clear. That is a pronoun reference error. The correct sentence will be the minister met the manager who recognized him. So who here refers to the manager because it is immediately coming after the word manager. The minister met the manager and recognized him. Now here it is referring to the minister because the minister did two things. First he met the manager, secondly he recognized him. Right? So these are, these are the correct way of pronouncing or you all stating these sentences. Let us move forward. Let us take up practice question 1. The teacher gave example of the great personalities to show that everyone must be held responsible for their actions. Now you have to find out the error over here right? and you have four options. A option says to show that everyone must be held responsible for their actions. Now as you can see from the sentence itself without looking at the options, you know that your subject in the latter part of the sentence is everyone. And you know that everyone is singular, therefore you will use his or her for that, not their. And therefore that, that is there in the D option, you have there, right, you have his. That is why D option will be correct over here, not A, B or C, right. Let us move forward. The information presented in the most recent reports indicate that turbulent times lie ahead for those who have invested only in blue chip stocks. Now one thing important you have to keep in mind, in the test when you are going to go for the company placements, you do not know 
whether the sentence has a pronoun reference error or, is, or it has a subject verb agreement error, you will get all the questions under one umbrella paper. And if here it is quite easy because you know, okay, we are talking about pronoun reference error and so the mistake might be of that. But in the general sense, when you are giving a paper, you don't know which error is actually there. So we need to solve generally, we need to solve questions generally which are independent of the topic that we are discussed. Now in this question, if you are able to find out the error, you will see that there is no error of pronoun reference, but there is an error of subject verb agreement because information is actually singular in nature and for information, whenever there is a singular subject, you generally add S or ES with the verb and therefore it will be indicates not indicate and that is there in the B and the C options. So we look at the B and the C options now. B says indicates that turbulent times lie ahead for those who have invested only in blue chip stocks and C says indicates that turbulent times are laying ahead. Now laying is the wrong word over here. It should be lying ahead not laying ahead. So that's the wrong word. So C is also incorrect and B will be the correct option over here. So you, you can see there are multitude of errors. One error was in the subject verb agreement over here. Another error was in the use of the word that is difference between these two confusing words that is lay and lie. Right. So that's how you have got to deal with these questions. Let's move forward. Let's take another example. I never go to that restaurant because they have moldy cheese. Now I'm talking about a restaurant and for the restaurant I'm using the pronoun they which is wrong because restaurant is a singular entity and it's a thing. So you should be using it for that, not they. So the correct word sentence will be, I never go to that restaurant because it has moldy cheese. Let's move forward with this. Let's take up now the second type of error and that is the error in modifiers. Now what is a modifier? First of all, you'll have to understand. So anything that modifies is something. Let's say it could be a word, it could be a phrase, it could be a clause. If it modifies a sentence, it is called as a modifier. You will understand this better with the help of an example over here. Let's look at this example. Chicken smart, the travel agency could not help admiring the model's clothes. Now, this sentence is not clear what we are talking about, right? Chicken smart is referring to what? We don't know. This sentence is ambiguous. It's unclear. So, the correct sentence will be the travel agency could not help admiring the model's chicken smart clothes. Right. So here chicken smart you can say is actually modifying the noun clothes. So it's acting as a modifier over here. It's an adjective which is acting as a modifier over here. Right. Let's move forward. Now choose the correct sentence with the modifier in the correct place. The clerk sold the scarf with the red print to the woman. B says the clerk sold the scarf to the woman with the red print. Now B is unclear. Right. Whether the scarf is having the red print or is the woman who is having the red print. Right. Although by common sense you know that it is the scarf and the other person will also understand but it is unclear, it is ambiguous and therefore A option will be correct over here. Moving forward, let's take up a practice question. Select the sentence that is written correctly over here. Did you see a guy with a beard cross the bridge? Did you see a guy with a beard that was crossing the bridge? That is wrong because now you don't use that for the person over here, right? You will say who was crossing the bridge, not that was crossing the bridge. See, did you see a guy with a, with a beard that crossed the bridge, that bridge? That is also wrong because again we are using that for that. It's wrong. D says, did you see a guy cross the bridge with a beard? Now here there is a wrong positioning of the modifier that is with a beard. Now we don't know, is it, is it the bridge that has a beard? That's not possible. So D is also wrong. So the correct answer over here will be A option, right? Let's move forward. Now sometimes the adverb will also act as a modifier because it modifies the verbs, adjectives and adverbs. For example, if I say this is a very good book, very over here is modifying good book. So very is a modifier. The boy ran quickly, quickly is a modifier over here, right? Now what are modifier phrases? For example, look at this sentence. Looking at the clock, he noticed that he was late. Now looking at the clock over here is a modifier because it is modifying the sentence. He noticed that he was late, right? Now what does the rule say? It says that the rule of the misplaced modif no, modifier now. Let's look at an example over here. She wore the hat on her head 
which she bought yesterday. Now this is the error of misplaced modifier. The modifier is not placed in the correct position because we don't know what did she buy yesterday. Was it the head that she bought yesterday? No, it was not the head. It was the hat. So the correct sentence will be she tried the hat which she bought yesterday. Now the modifier should come with the thing with which, which it is referring to. If it is referring to the hat, then the modifier should come with that. She tried the hat which she bought yesterday on a head. Right? Dangling modifier. Now, what is a dangling modifier? Dangling modifier is when it is left hanging. We'll, we'll, take it, we'll take it with the help of an example. Right? Let's take up this example. After reading the great new book, the movie based on it is sure to be exciting. Now, after reading the great new book over here is a modifier which is modifying the remaining part of the sentence that is the movie based on it is sure to be exciting. Right? Now, you should ask yourself, after reading the great new book, who was reading the great new book? Obviously, it has to be some person, maybe you, maybe me, maybe some third person. So, the rule says that that subject should immediately come after that modifier. So, that means if it is Anna who was actually reading the great new book, then Anna should immediately come after the modifier. After reading the great new book, Anna thought the movie based on it was sure to be exciting. I hope it is clear to you. So, a subject must be added so that the modifier has something to describe. Let us take an example. Walking in the park, a snake bit him. Now, again this is wrong. Why? Because you will ask yourself who was walking in the park. Obviously, it was some person and that should come immediately after the modifier. So, you will say walking in the park, he was bitten by a snake. That is the error of the dangling modifier. Let us take up some practice questions now. Select the sentence that is written correctly. Coming out of the market, the bananas fell on the pavement. Coming out of the market? Now, you have to ask yourself who was coming out of the, out of the market, not the bananas, right? So, that is wrong. This sentence is wrong. Hiking the trail, Bill heard birds chirping loudly. Now, that is correct because it is Bill who was actually hiking the trail, right? So, that seems to be correct. Let us look at the third option. He wore a straw hat on his head, which was obviously too small. Now, we are talking about the hat now, but we are using the modifier after head. That is why it is incorrect. Let us take the D option. I saw an accident walking down the street. Absurd, completely absurd, right? So, the correct answer over here will be the B option, right? Let us take up now third type of error that is comparisons. Now, when you are comparing two things, right? When you are comparing two things, you should compare the right things. For example, you have to compare people to people and things to things. You can't compare people with things. That will be incorrect. For example, while Hardy and Dickens were both renowned as authors during the 19th century, today the novels of Dickens are more widely read than Hardy. Now, the meaning is you can understand what we are talking about. We are talking about the novels over here. But the comparison is wrong. What I am doing over here? I am comparing the novels of Dickens with Hardy. How can I compare a thing with a person? That is why that is wrong. The correct sentence will be, today the novels of Dickens are more widely read than those of Hardy. That will be the correct sentence. Right? Now, in case of comparative and superlative degrees we will be talking about now. Let us say, when we are talking about the comparative degree now, we say, John is wiser than all men. Now, this is wrong because whenever we are using a comparative degree, then we exclude John from that. He is wiser than all other men because I am comparing John with other men. right? So, John is not a subset of that group, excluded from that group. right? That is the comparative degree. right? But when I am using the superlative degree, then John is included in the group. Then John is the subset of that group. Then I will say, John is the wisest of all men and John is one of them, right? So, that is the difference. For example, let us take up the question over here. MS Dhoni is the most wisest of all the cricketers. What is wrong over here? Now, what is wrong over here is that we are using its error of redundancy, you can say, because most and wisest, both are referring to a superlative degree. You do not need to use both of them at the same time. You can say, Amazoni is the wisest of all the cricketers. So, C option will be correct over here. Right?
and let's take up another sentence choose the grammatically correct statement from the given choices mehul is the most interesting and clever boy of the class mehul is most interesting and clever boy of the class c option says mehul is the more interesting and clever boy of the class now c is absolutely wrong because when you are comparing you are saying more interesting and obviously you are comparing it with something or someone but that is not mentioned over here in the sentence so c is eliminated d says mehul is the most interesting and cleverest boy of the class now it's you can say it is also an error of parallelism because when you are talking about superlative degrees so you are talking about two superlative degrees simultaneously coincidentally right so you will say mehul is the most interesting and cleverest boy of the class because you are using the superlative degree over here so d option will be correct over here right and the last of the errors that i am going to discuss in this session and that is redundancy so redundancy means when you are using unnecessary words which are not required and that's making your speech or your writing very complex and you know this is a fast world and people want short news today right so redundancy you don't you want to avoid redundancy in your sentences right let's take example for example when you say foreign imports now you know imports are coming from outside you don't, you don't have to say foreign imports bald headed somebody who is bald means he does not have hair on his head so you don't have to say bald headed burning fire blend together blend means to come together actual fact facts are actual you don't need to say that this is an actual fact that's wrong right join together similarly little baby false pretense pretense means something that is a, a false example you are giving right or a false excuse you are making so you don't need to say false pretense free gift you know gifts are free black darkness or merge together all these are examples of redundant phrases right so more than one word is used to talk about the same thing for example if i say please combine the three departments into one now you know when you are com combining obviously they are being combined into one so you don't have to say that you will say please combine the three departments that's it would you please repeat again what you said we generally say this would you please repeat again what you said that's wrong would you please repeat what you said because repeat means to say it again so that's the error of redundancy let's take up a question over here unfortunately last night temperature dropped suddenly which will mean that the shoots emerging from the soil will be killed by the frost right let's look at the options which will mean that the shoots emerging from the soil will be killed by the frost that means the same sentence is correct b says which will mean that the frost will kill the shoots emerging from the soil c says and this will mean that the shoots emerging from the soil will be killed by the frost and d says and the resulting frost will kill the shoots that are emerging from the soil now if you look at the a b and the c options now what is which referring to which will mean that it's not clear right and that's why a and b are eliminated in c option it says and this will mean that now here also it is not clear what is this referring to so it's the error of pronoun reference and you should know that in a multiple choice questions in your competitive exams you don't know which error i'm talking of you have to look at the sentence independently right and therefore d option will be correct over here and the resulting frost now the word resulting shows that i'm talking about the last uh, the part of that sentence you know when the temperature drops suddenly as a result of that the frost will kill the shoots that are emerging from the soil so d option will be correct over here and that's it for now thank you everyone